morning time. Good morning. I didn't film like any b-roll last night because I think by the time I got into my hotel room it was like 12:45. We had a lot of delays yesterday. We were supposed to be to the hotel by like 11:30. So basically like a whole hour, a little over an hour earlier. We just had a lot of rolling delays with our flight from Seattle to LA. I'm in LA by the way. I'm in LAX. If you've been watching my vlogs for like since the be at least since the beginning of my flight attendant journey, usually I stay with my parents when I do the LAX layovers. Um, it just didn't work out with their work schedule and with my work schedule, but it's all good. A lot of times we stay in Long Beach, which I usually don't like going down that way since my hometown where my parents live is like north of LA rather than south of LA. But this hotel they put us in downtown LA. So I'm excited about that. Two things I want to do. I want to go to a bookstore and I want to go to Jinya. Jinya is like around the corner, super close. So that's really easy to do. The bookstore is like a 15 minute walk and it is 11.30 and my pickup time is 3.25. So it's not gonna take me a long time to get ready. I just need to put my uniform back on, throw things in my bag and go. So I only need about like 25, 30 minutes so I probably have to be back up here by like 2.50ish. A little over three hours from now, so I have plenty of time, but I think I'm gonna go get food first because I'm very hungry. Then I'll walk from the food to the bookstore, and that's really all the time I have. This is considered a long layover because it was supposed to be 18 hours. It's basically a little less than 17 hours now, the layover. It wouldn't have changed at all though, like to be honest, even if we wouldn't have had the delay last night, Maybe I would have woken up a little bit earlier and had a, a little extra time in the morning, but at the end of the day, like, it just took time away from last night. It didn't take time away from the day, if that makes sense, if you catch my drift. So the layover is long, but it's really not that long, but I'm just beyond thrilled to have a long layover and then a long layover in California, in Los Angeles, my favorite place in the world. So I'm going to get going because I'm very, very, very hungry and I'm excited to have ramen because as we know, that's my favorite food. When I got back from Japan, my brother was joking because I think we had ramen like five times in Japan. And my brother, he was like, are you tired of having ramen? Or he was like, so are you gonna go like five months without having ramen? Or he said something like that. And I was like, uh, no, I'm thinking about ramen right now. So let's, let's get going. <laughs> Right after I'm done filming this clip, I'm just gonna get dressed, throw everything in my bag, and head downstairs. But I obviously, I was thinking to myself, like, I'm in downtown LA, I'm going to pass a boba shop, and lo and behold, I didn't have to search for one. There was literally one right in front of me. So I just got a passion fruit green tea with boba. It's my one of my favorite drinks in the world. I did get a few books from the bookstore. By the way, that place is a new contender of where I want my ashes to be spread after I die. Okay, this is, it's, there's proof now. There's video footage of me saying that. So in case anyone forgets, it was magical though. I love that place so much. And I spent like probably a little over an hour there and it was only like a 15 minute walk from where we are staying. I bought this old copy. I think this was um, produced in the 60s 
of Tenders and Night by F. Scott Fitzgerald. I did read this like two and a half years ago, maybe three years ago. It is like the decline of a very influential psychiatrist and the like ruining of his marriage and this other younger character who kind of comes in, they become infatuated with each other. It is a brilliant character study. And that is what I like about, about F. Scott Fitzgerald's work. I know that like there's a lot to be said and I honestly want to do more research myself of, cause I know that there is some talk about Zelda Fitzgerald, F. Scott Fitzgerald's wife, having influenced or originated a lot of his stories that he kind of wrote. Anyway, all that to say, I love Zelda. She's a queen, okay? But it's a great book, character study, very deep character study of very, very, very flawed people. But this is like a, just a really old copy. I mean, like I just like to collect old books and yeah, I just wanted it. There's really nothing else to say. I got this book called The Lives of Animals by J.M. Coetzee. I'm not sure how you say this name. And honestly, I've never even heard of this book before. I saw the the cover instantly drawn to it. Read the first few pages. I think it is fiction, but it is written like it is nonfiction kind of thing. And it is about somebody who is against animal cruelty, as as to be expected from the name and the cover of the book. That is a topic I'm extremely passionate about. And then I got uh, Movable Feast by Ernest Hemingway. This just details I think a year or two in the lives of Ernest Hemingway. Um, Gertrude Stein was there. I think F. Scott Fitzgerald was there. And this is like the summers they were in Paris and kind of the stuff they got into, all these writers, these American classic writers, the stuff they got into in Paris. And it's just fascinating to me. To be quite honest, I think I might already have a copy of this at home, but it was $8 and this one definitely looks older and the print is slightly larger which I like, so do I have a book buying problem? More than likely, yes. I love that place. If you ever have a chance to go to that place, if you live near LA or if you're visiting at any time, it was really cool. I would say as somebody who is Southern California native, native close by to Los Angeles, that I feel like that should be like considered a landmark of Los Angeles because it's in like kind of the historical part of downtown LA. Um, it's not too far from it's called crypto.com arena now, but to me it'll always be Staples Center. <laughs> it's near that area. It was really, really cool. Obviously, as you see from the footage. I think I mentioned this earlier, but after this trip, I have a few days off and then I have a three day trip that starts this weekend. I am supposed to go, I think it's. Los Angeles, no, Las Vegas and Detroit. It's a short Las Vegas and a longer Detroit. Originally I had an even worse trip, but I managed to swap into this one, which was slightly better, slightly being the operative term. I'm gonna try to put in for a move up to see if I can get maybe an international trip or something like that. Highly unlikely, but I thought I'd mention it here just on the very, very slim chance that I do get a move up that there is context to that. I don't think it's gonna happen. There's not a lot of international trips out of Salt Lake, as I'm sure I've talked about enough. But anyway, I've gotta start getting ready, so let's do this thing. So remember earlier when I said my trip was like a Vegas and Detroit layover? Well, that was a lie. That was supposed to be next week's, which next weekend's, which is actually also not the trip anymore because I swapped in some, to something that was a little higher time for more money. The trip I'm on now is San Francisco and a short Denver. It is 11.41 though, and we were delayed like a whole hour leaving LA last night. So yesterday, this is how the day went really fast. Salt Lake, San Francisco, San Francisco, LA, back up to San Francisco. That was the end of the day. So really easy flights. We were delayed a little over an hour leaving LA on that last flight. So we lost about an hour of our layover. 
So we didn't even get to our rooms till like after 1 a.m. So I didn't fall asleep till like 3 a.m. You know what? I'm just tired, but I did wake up like about an hour, a little over an hour ago. There's just a few things I want to see, but I do have to be back in the room by like 1.45 ish because our pickup is 225. Obviously, if like my hair and makeup is done, I just have to change, pack up, and go. There's this one place called Mr. Charlie's, which is like a vegan McDonald's knockoff that I want to go see because they only have like a location in LA and then a location here, I think. So I want to go do that. And then I don't think I have very many other plans. To be honest, I was going to edit, finish editing one of my vlogs while I was here, but I think just with losing that hour, like, I knew I was gonna sleep longer than I wanted to, which just made things harder in general because I am just not a morning person and trying to wake up in the morning is too difficult for me. <laughs> it's cold outside though, it's 56 degrees. And if you are, if you're a coastal California native or if you live in coastal California, you know that that is very cold for being so close to the water. I usually only bring these hoodies to like wear in the hotel rooms because it's I'm usually cold in the hotel room, but we're gonna be rocking this hoodie out there. Not that it's, not that it's a, it's a bad one. It's not, but yeah. a bit of shopping so obviously I got a couple bucks for my birthday a few weeks ago and one thing I needed was like replenishment on skincare which is like not like an exciting thing to buy because it's like kind of something you have to buy but it was a good use of birthday money as you saw I went to the mr. Charlie's place which was great by the way I'm very full I did not know that if you bought a meal, it came with like a four piece of those like fake chicken nuggets as well. So that was a lot of food and I have a problem where I have to eat everything I see until I'm about to burst. So one of the first things I needed to buy today was this Paula's Choice cleansing balm. This is like a makeup remover. I used this before I use my regular cleanser because I forgot to pack it. So you want to know how I washed my face last night? I used the bar of soap and then i used my normal cleanser so i feel like my skin is hating me today because i used a bar of soap on my face but i knew that like i needed to double cleanse because of my makeup so anyway i've i've already been loving this stuff usually i have two things my skincare stays in my skincare bag and then my home skincare like stays at home so i don't have to move them but i only had one of these so it made sense that i forgot it at some point i just saw this this is a fragrance brand that i think is la based because they talk about the 405 which makes my la heart so happy but this is just a car freshener and i really like the scent in sephora obviously i went to sephora so i thought i'd buy this and if i liked it in the car maybe it's something i buy for for my fragrance like my body i bought a danessa merrick's it's like an eyeshadow, but it's like foily, like uh, green and golden. I use the Danessa Merrick's blush off 
dipped in. So I'm excited to try something else. I had to get a replenishment of the Super Goop uh, under eye cream. This is one of my favorite under eye creams because it's, it's slightly tinted. It doesn't like cover anything, but it's slightly tinted, but it's got sunscreen, which is important to me because I like to spend time in the sun, which means I need to be lathered in sunscreen. And then this Dr. Dennis Gross, I think is how you pronounce the last name. This is an under eye cream for nighttime. This is something new I'm trying, but it has retinol in it. So it's supposed to like help with like fine lines and wrinkles and then like any uh, texture because re that's what retinol does. Cute person at the counter gave me these samples, but I don't know if I'm gonna use them because it matters if they're cruelty free or vegan. So we'll see. Having this long San Francisco layover and then like just a few days ago having that long LA. It makes me really miss the long layovers I used to get when I was in, mainly in New York. I did have a few in Seattle, like way more than I have in Salt Lake, but I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna sit here and pretend like I also don't slightly bid against them. And I know you're thinking like, why do you bid against them? I technically don't bid against long layovers, but I do bid against early report times. So anything before like noon, I bid against because I think I've mentioned it in a video or two, maybe I haven't, but like having a routine at home is very important to me at least like three days out of the week. I would prefer four days. And a lot of times I do get four days out of the week, but do you know what I mean? Like being able to be at home, waking up at a normal time, going to the gym, like cleaning, um, being able to run errands, grocery shop, cook, like that stuff is very important to me. And I know a lot of flight attendants are younger. They might not have like a, like a partner at home or like family they need to take care of or whatever. Or they might not have the same priorities as me, which is a-okay, like that's totally fine. But one of my priorities is being at home. And so I know a lot of flight attendants like pick up on trips and do this or that, or don't mind waking up really early. But like waking up really early really ruins my routine because I can't sleep at night. It'd be great if I could sleep, if I was a good sleeper, but I'm not. If I have a 7 a.m. report time, that means I have to wake up at 4.30 because I have to leave the house at 6. And like, if I wake up at 4.30, the most amount of sleep I'm getting is maybe four hours, maybe four hours on a good night, because usually I can't fall asleep before 1 a.m. So I kind of bid against long layovers, but I do manage to get them every now and then, i.e. this San Francisco, last week's LA. I had kind of a longish Detroit one next week that I ended up swapping out of, as I mentioned earlier. I did get my schedule for next month. Originally on my line, they gave me two anchorages, which I was really excited about because I've never been to Alaska. I'm really excited. I'm, I've heard the best things about our Anchorage layover, but I ended up swapping out of one of them because I prefer to fly A, as I've mentioned on previous videos, I think A position is flight leader. So I prefer to fly flight leader um, and we make more money an hour when we are flying flight leader. And so now that I'm used to making the more money because the amount of extra money we make is like making year three pay almost instead of the post year one pay I'm making or year two, whatever you want to look at it. Only one of my anchorages was a position. The other one was regular and it's a low time credit trip. It's only worth like nine hours and 50 minutes. So just under 10 hours. So I swapped out of that one for a short two day where I'll be a position. That being said, my schedule could still change. Like it's only May 20th and I plan to continue, continuously check open time to look for better trips. So my schedule can frequently change, but I, the one Anchorage I do plan on keeping because it's a position. I've never been to Anchorage and really exciting. I have a classmate who I haven't worked with yet who is a Salt Lake City based classmate, obviously. I'm excited to work that trip with her because that'll be fun. But tonight we end up in Denver. It's a short Denver layover. It's only like just barely 11 hours and 15 minutes. So it's like borderline minimum rest. So I don't really plan on doing anything, but I will check in from the hotel tonight or tomorrow morning whenever I get around to it. I think that the next thing after that Denver layover will be, we have this big event that the company kind of puts on for us once we hit our year mark where they invite our entire class back and I think they end up inviting like I think they do multiple classes at a time but our entire class from last year so like all 100 people you know how we were split up into sections so all 100 people are invited back to like basically have a party one night and then the next day it's like catch up on what the airline has been doing um, the future of the airline the future of the job potential stuff like kind of 
kind of like sit down, we're business attire, we're, we're listening to presentations and stuff like that. I am so excited to see my classmates. I'm not gonna vlog very much. I'll probably just use my phone, but I am going to add clips from that into here for like a personal memory. And also if you were on the fence about wanting to apply um, to become a flight attendant, then maybe seeing like cool things like this or how exciting this party could be or how fun this party could be might entice you to hitting the application button because guess what? Applications are open. It's the best job. So, I mean, if you can handle the lifestyle, then it's the best job. So anyway, I've been chatting for long enough. Last thing I wanted to mention, just the very last thing. I've been reading the Secret Society. Secret Society? It's so funny because the first thing my brain wanted to say was the Dead Poets Society. I was like, that's something different. I love that pieces, something different. The Secret History. I've been reading The Secret History by Donna Tartt. I am about halfway through. I don't know if you can tell. This is wild. I love this. I love how pretentious these people are. I eat it up. I just last year read If We Were Villains by M.L. Rio. I think I mentioned it in my London vlog when I had that amazing London layover at the end of November last year. This has been on my to be read pile for quite some time. And so I'm excited to get around to it. It's similar to If We Were Villains, but also very different. If We Were Villains was a five star read for me. Like I love that so much. Like I, favorite book, one of my favorite books of all time. This is very different. This is not as like emotionally driven or as like, I feel like I want to give the characters a hug. Like as I did with <laughs> If We Were Villains. There are some characters in here I want to give a hug, but not not as many. It does involve a murder, what happened. You kind of hear about it and then you go back in time and then you lead up to the events of it. It's dark academia, it's it's um, pretentious, rich people in college, like it's Greek. It's all about Greek and Roman history and I love it so far. I'll chat with you guys later because I've been chatting for, I think says 12 minutes now. Obviously when I cut up the clips, it'll be shorter, but that's much too long, so. Good morning. It's actually not morning anymore. It's 12.30. We have a pickup time of 1.48. It was originally supposed to be 11, but when I woke up at 9.30 this morning, I checked the app and for whatever reason, our flight out of Denver back to Salt Lake, because we were supposed to go Denver to Salt Lake and then Salt Lake to Kansas City and then Kansas City back to Salt Lake and that was the end of the flight. For whatever reason, this flight delayed Denver back to Salt Lake so they took us off of the Kansas City turn that we were having at the end of our day today. So now we are released at like 5 p.m. instead of, I think we were supposed to be released at like 9 something p.m. We do have a bit of a delay, but it made life easier on us, obviously. <laughs> I have been frustratingly trying to upload and deal with a video all morning though. So I am just hoping this uploads fully before I have to leave the hotel room so that I can send it on its way and uh, schedule it for a few hours from now or something. I'm looking at my laptop right now. It says it has 50, 52 minutes left to upload and I have to leave the hotel room in a little over an hour, but the timing on the computer lies very often, so we shall see.
enjoy the space of a night Close your eyes and dance the night away We said it's not on fire On fire Hello, it's really late. Well, it's 11.41, which is late. Sam is already asleep, so I'm in the other room, which I haven't been in in a long time in videos. So you might recognize this background if you've been on my channel for a while. I just wanted to check in. I know I didn't get very much footage at either our one year anniversary party or my friend's graduation today. It was a week filled with celebration and I really, really, really do love my airline. It kind of felt like I was back in the world of my company for a week straight, which was kind of nice. I had a great time this entire week and the best part of the year anniversary celebration was seeing some of the people that I love so dearly that I have not seen. Some of them I've seen a little bit over the course of the last year, but some of them I hadn't seen in a year and our instructors also showed up to say hi, which made me feel extra special because no one else's instructors came by to say hi, so, you know. Really though, I came on here to just express some gratitude. I had the very amazing opportunity of meeting, I would say like maybe 12 to 15 maybe people at my friend's graduation today who came up to me and told me they watched my videos which was very special to me like i know it seems maybe funny to hear as a viewer who's watching this video but it was very special to me and it made me feel very happy a little embarrassed because like i know that i put these videos out on the internet and i know that people see them like some people see them but it's also kind of funny because i feel like it's so easy to just throw something on the internet and not realize that other people see it until somebody acknowledges that they see it, you know what I mean? To everyone that came up to me today to say hi, first and foremost, thank you very much for saying hi to me, first of all, but also thank you for just watching these videos. Like, I know those of you that watch these videos who said hi to me today, like, I know you went into these videos looking for what to expect in, in flight attendant training and what to expect for my particular airline and what flying might be like in certain bases. But if you've stuck around and you watched my videos, I just really appreciate it. If my videos can do anything, all I can hope for is that they help somebody. Like truly, if they could do anything, all, I, all that I hope for is that they can help somebody. I'm just happy other people appreciate it since it's like an art form for me. I don't remember everybody's name. I know I met Sage. I know I met Nikki. I know I met a Jamal. I know I met Peter. I know I met, I met. I think I think I met a Kevin. I'm so sorry. There's so many names. I don't remember all of them. If you happen to post a photo that you took with me, tag me in it. Or if you're watching this video and I mentioned you or I either forgot to mention you that and I said hi to you, can you please leave a comment down below? Because I would love to say hi to you and to actually get your name. Um, like truly, please. Like genuinely, please leave your leave a comment down below. So. I can either say hi again or I can get your name because I'm really sorry that I didn't get everyone's name. Moving on, that is going to be the end of this vlog. I sincerely appreciate everybody's, everybody watching this vlog. I know usually I end the vlogs with like um, just clips and some music. That's how I prefer to end them, but this one's going to end with me talking. So hopefully um, that's okay too. I have a three day trip that starts tomorrow and I just got back from Atlanta from the graduation like the graduation was earlier today and I just got back from Atlanta. Just got home like maybe three hours ago. So not a lot of time at home this week. As you can see, I hopped back and forth to Atlanta twice on my days off, I guess you could say. The party was technically a paid 
work party, so I guess I was being paid, but kind of felt like a day off. <laughs> Following that three-day trip, I have sets of eight days, and then I have my two sets of eight days in June back to back. They're not touching each other, but they're they basically follow each other. So I'm not sure what the next 10 days to two weeks is gonna look like. I will vlog it. I know a lot of times I don't vlog my A days now that I've been living in base because I prefer to work as little as possible on my reserve days. <laughs> so a lot of times I'm not doing anything fun, but um, I'm gonna see if I can maybe get a good trip and vlog it or something. So I'm gonna stop rambling though. Thank you so much for watching and love you guys very much. Again, please comment below if I met you. I really would love to say hi again. and. I will talk to you next time.